before. One hundred and thirty six days before. The week before, I left my family in Florida and the rest of my minor life to go to a boarding school in Alabama. My mother insisted on throwing me a getaway party to say that I had low expectations would be to underestimate the matter dramatically. Although I was more or less forced to invite all my school friends, i.e. ragtag bunch of drama people and English geeks I sat with by social, by social necessity in the cavernous cafeteria of the public school, I knew they wouldn't come. Still, my mother preserved a wash in the delusion that I had kept my popularity a secret from her all these years. She cooked a small mountain of artichoke dip. She festooned our living room in green and yellow streamers, the color of my new school. She brought two dozen champagne poppers and placed them around the edge of the coffee table. And when the final Friday came, when my packing was mostly done, she sat with my dad and me on the living room couch at 4.56 p.m. and patiently awaited the arrival of the goodbye to Miles Calvary. Said Calvary consisted of exactly two people, Marie Lawson, a tiny, tiny blonde with rectangular glasses and her chunky, to put it charitably, boyfriend Will. Hey, Miles, Marie said as she sat down. Hey, I said. How was your summer, Will asked. Okay, yours. Good, we just, we did Jesus Christ Superstar. I helped with the sets, Marie did light, did light, said Will. That's cool, I nodded knowingly that, and that about ex exhausted our conversation topics. I might have asked a question about Jesus Christ Superstar, except that one, I didn't know what it was, and two, I didn't care to learn, and three, I never really excelled at a small talk. My mom, however, can talk small for hours, and so she extended the awkwardness by asking them about their rehearsal schedule and how the show had gone and whether it was a success. I guess it was, Marie said. A lot of people came, I guess. Marie said was the sort of person to guess a lot. Finally, Will said, well, we just dropped by to say goodbye. I've got, I've got to get Marie home by six. Have fun at boarding school, Miles. Thanks, I answered, relieved. The only thing worse than having a party that no one attends is having a party attended only by two vastly, deeply uninteresting people. They left, so I sat with my parents and stared at the blank TV and wanted to turn it on, but I knew I shouldn't. I could feel them both looking at me, waiting for me to burst into tears or something, as if I hadn't known all along that it would go precisely like this. But I had known. I could feel their pity as they scooped artichoke dip with their chips intended for, for my imaginary friends. But they needed pity more than I did. I wasn't disappointed. My, my expectation had been met. Is this why you wanted to leave, Miles? Mom asked. I molded over for a minute. Carefully not to look at her. Uh, no, I said. Well, why then, she asked. This was the first time she posed the question. Mom mom was not particularly keen on letting me go to boarding school and had made no secret of it. Because of me, Dad asked. He had attended Culver Creek, the same boarding school to which I was headed as, as had both of his brothers, and all of their kids. I think he liked the idea of be following in his footsteps. My uncle, my uncles had told me stories about how famous my dad had been on the campus for having simultaneously raised hell and aced all his classes. That sounded like a better life than, than the one I had in Florida. But no, it wasn't because of my dad, not exactly. Hold on, I said. I went to dad's study and found his biography of Franco's Rebellious. I liked the reading biographies of writers, even if, as was the case of Monsieur Rebellious, I've never read any of their actual writing. I flipped to the back and found the highlighted quote, Never use a highlighter in my books, my dad had told me a thousand times, but how else are you supposed to find what you're looking for? So this guy, I said standing in the doorway, 
of the living room, Frank is rebellious. He was a poet. And his last words were, I go to see a great perhaps. That's why I'm going. So I don't have to wait until I die to start seeking a great perhaps. And that qu quieted them. I was, I was after a great perhaps, and they knew, as well as I did, that I wasn't going to find it with the likes of Will and Mary. I sat back down on the couch between my mom and my dad, and my dad put his arm around me, and we stayed there like that, quite quiet on the couch together for a long time until it seemed okay to turn on the TV, and then we ate artichoke dip for dinner and watched the History Channel as... And as going away parties go, it certainly couldn't, could have been worse.